German and British merchants. Where's it, my baby? You guys are. Because <laughs> you're forgiving. This one. Hey, everybody. I'm Ray. And I'm Paul. I'm Nigel. And we are. Alkanots. And today, we head to the sixth largest brewery in the world, established in 1903 and located in China. This beer combines German know how with local ingredients. So, Ray, why don't you give us the tale of the tape? Alrighty, so we've got a premium lager that is brewed with select malt, hops, and special yeast to deliver a crisp and clean lager that comes in at 4.5% ABV. And I'm excited about this one. Konnichiwa. No, I don't think that's right. That's but nonetheless, right. I'm thirsty. So let's crack these babies open. Let's do it. I smell the green bottle. There is a skunkiness coming out I of can totally the glass. Get it. But it is crystal clear. Brilliant, I would say, in terms of the color. This smells like a pothead favorite thing <laughs> absolutely <laughs> because of that skunkiness let's find out what's in these glasses so cheers nigel yeah cheers Paul. cheers right cheers guys All right cheers everybody the aroma is not in the flavor you get a maltiness in that flavor when you're drinking it it's not too shabby i'm, I'm kind of on the fence right now I love it, and you know, I've had loads of it because every Chinese restaurant in England sells Chintao beers. So. It's got a really nice, really nice malty flavor to it. It's it's smooth, it's crisp. This would cut through some like spicy Asian food really, really nicely. It does clean the palate each time you you drink it. The mouth feel is very minimal. It's not overly carbonated. Mm -hmm. That maltiness is what really surprised me. I was really thinking this would be more of like a lager where it's just crisp and clean with almost zero aftertaste. But that maltiness is growing on me. It's crisp and clean without without the really heavy carbonation. I wasn't really looking forward to this one. And, and it's not because, you know, it's a, a Chinese beer. It's just one of those things where like, it's 4.5%. Yep. It's a light lager. And I just thought it was going to be more one of those sessionable lagers. I was going to have like zero taste. This has taste. It's one of the top lagers in the world for a reason. <laughs> well, absolutely. Uh, evidently, it's available in 100 countries throughout the world. Going back to 1903, the German and British merchants that came to China really wanted to establish a beer in that area. And that they incorporated the local ingredients using German know-how because realistically, back then, the Germans were the beer gods. Here we are, 2024, and people are still drinking this. Yep. So I'm really curious. Was this actually brewed in China and shipped to Canada? I asked the intranet. Internet, eh? Who brews Qingdao beer? And it didn't give me an answer. What it gave me was a distributor. And what that tells me is the stuff is imported. Yeah. I guess distributed across Canada. Yeah. Right. So next question, green bottle. Oh, affected nice. by light a little bit more. So which gives you the skunky, Heineken-y, Stella kind of aroma that we're used to. If we drank this fresh in China, would it be less skunky? I don't mind skunk. That's a good question. I, I don't know. We should go to China. Okay. Okay, I, I'm in. I'm totally in. Yeah. Um, that's just a hop, skip, and a jump from where you are, right? Yeah, I would love to like go down there and find out. Yeah, for sure. Send us money so we can go. <laughs> Please. Our go fund page is. <laughs> Nigel, you're putting some of these in your fridge. Yeah. How many are you putting in there? If I'm having a meal, like a Chinese meal. Chinese food? Chinese food. Definitely a keg. <laughs> if I'm just drinking them. Probably uh, what's in between that and a six pack. Four pack? Okay. Yeah, look yeah. at okay, that. Uh, Ray, what are you thinking? Thinking sexy thoughts. Thinking sexy thoughts. Yeah, this is a it's a twelve pack for me. This is this is a beer that I could keep twelve in the fridge at all times, and it's a it's a good go to. It's okay. nice and light, refreshing, clean, easy to drink. Cut the grass, chug a couple of these, we're good to go. What I'm gonna say is, in regards to this beer, it is not like any other lager I've had. Most lagers are crisp and clean and crushable. This one is not for the lack of crushability at 4.5%. It's just one of those beers where I think you just want to just enjoy it. That maltiness is a really good kick. I'm going to say if I'm going to buy 
a certain amount of this, I'm going to do a two for this. And with that being said, I'm Paul. I'm Ray. I'm Nigel. And we are the Alkanauts. Cheers, all.